All right. Hello, everybody. I think we're live. I had to get back up because I had a complete mind blank. If you've been watching the previous three weeks worth of videos, you will know that I'm trying to get used to this software, but it's been a big week and I could not even remember what button to press. So Tim is right. You can see this is the corner of him here because he doesn't like to be in the videos. And uh, he's just going to stay until everything is in check. And then um, I'll share the screen or he will share the screen on my behalf so that I don't mess this up. So I apologize. It's now five past seven, but I had to end the last one so that um, when I upload this to YouTube for those people that aren't on Facebook, they're not going to have to watch me trying to work out what I was doing for the start of that video. Okay, uh, today we're going to be talking about meal planning. I am assuming a number of people that are going to be watching live tonight have seen the previous three live videos on organizing the four of us. So we did three separate videos across three weeks. Uh, a little bit of what I would suggest if you're just new to organizing, you're wanting to get on top of your house, you're wanting to get on top of your budget, tonight obviously your meal plan. If you haven't seen any of those videos, then they are all on organizing the four of us. But I wanted to do the meal planning video over on Leanne Baker Daily because of, port, uh, of course, it's such a huge part of the planner. And that meal planning page is something that I think um, everyone can utilize and certainly make work for them. So everyone meal plans differently. We're going to talk through different ways that people meal plan tonight. Oh, he's coming to say hello. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, hopefully you can pick up some tips that work for you. Uh, not the, the same thing doesn't work for everyone. So I'm going to go through a number of different ideas. Hopefully one is something that you can tweak to make it work for your family. Or perhaps we'll go through something tonight that just helps you to rethink the way that you do things and uh, decide if there's a better way to do it. So we are going to share the screen now and then Tim can uh, leave me. Otherwise, I'm going to mess this up for sure. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, we are good to go. I'll grab this mouse. And uh, in the background of the screen that you can see are uh, two worksheets. I actually have four for this week, so they're free. I upload them as free downloadable. So the first one uh, it just has some hints and tips on things that I would recommend you set for a goal for the week ahead if you're wanting to look at saving money on groceries, meal planning, and the $5 meal challenge that we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, there's also some meal ideas for $5 or less that readers on Organising the Four of Us kindly shared, and I just put a list together uh, on the right hand side, there is a printout for, to record 30 of your favorite meals and uh, you'll be able to print that out. And then there's two extra pages, which I'll talk through a little later in the video. Now, if you've never watched these videos before, uh, I'll just note that using this software, I can't see the comments on my screen, but I have my phone with me tonight and so I will be able hopefully if all goes to plan I will be able to look through the comments as we go or towards the end of the video so if you do have any questions or you'd like me to answer something specifically just pop it into the comment section I'm not ignoring them I will come back to them towards the end okay so the first thing I thought we'd go through is 10 tips to save money on groceries. I think that grocery budgets are really, really personal and individual things. So it depends on the size of your family. It depends on what you're comfortable spending as a family. And I certainly don't think you should be comparing your budget to anyone else's. Of course, use them as inspiration, maybe get ideas on how other people save money on their groceries. Uh, but I think it's important to look at what is a reasonable budget for you. So what our grocery budget is compared to what someone else's grocery budget is will be very different. And I've spoken before about the fact that we've actually increased our grocery budget over the years uh, because that was something that we really valued as we were changing the types of food that we were eating. And as we had less time in the kitchen, we did increase our grocery budget and we are comfortable with that. I think it's important to get an amount that you're comfortable with. So here are some tips. The first one, of course, being meal planning. Uh, it prevents you from wasting money when you go to the store because you have a plan generally you have a shopping list written up and when you go into the store you have a fairly good guideline of where you need to go in the store and what you're wanting to get uh, when you set out to do a meal plan or a shopping list ahead of time you can also see if it's going to be an expensive week or a cheaper week so you go into the store with a much better idea of what to expect uh, if you are going to meal plan 
I would highly recommend that you shop your pantry, your fridge and your freezer first. And the reason I say this is because if you don't do that, what can often happen is you write out a meal plan and a shopping list and then you go to the store and when you come home and you're unpacking your groceries, you notice that you already had some of the things that you had purchased that day. So when I write a shopping list out, the first thing I do, and I still do this, to, 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 uh, to this day is I will take my shopping list, go to the pantry, go to the fridge and the freezer and tick off anything that I had on my list that I already have in our house. And it sounds so simple, but it's something that certainly saved us money over time uh, because I'm much better now at not having three, four, five or six things accidentally in the pantry and going to buy more of them I am now more aware of what's in our pantry and I know what we need for the week ahead's meals. Um, <laughs> the next thing when you're meal planning is Tim sneezing, Hunt is playing some game to the side here, so I'm a little bit sidetracked tonight, um, is to plan easy meals on the nights that you have something on. So if you have after school sports, you know that it's a busy night. You know that when you get home, you're not in the mood for cooking. Some people say to me that's every night. Uh, but certainly plan easy meals for those nights. Don't put unrealistic meals on your meal plan for nights that you know that you struggle with meals in the kitchen. Try and find something easy, something that's really quick for those nights. And then that's also going to help you to uh, or prevent you from going past and picking up takeaway on those nights. So if you plan an easy meal, you're going to feel a lot better while you're out because uh, you'll think to yourself, I just need to make that meal that takes five or 10 minutes when I get home. If I'm out at late night swimming and I know that what's on the meal plan is going to take 40 to 50 minutes, naturally, uh, I won't want to go home and make that meal and we're far more likely to go past and pick something up on the way home and just say it'll be easy easier. So definitely when you're meal planning, don't only meal plan what you're going to eat for the week ahead, but also look at your planner, look at what you've got on the different days and plan around how busy you are that week, how busy you are on a particular day. And certainly if you love being in the kitchen and you enjoy making meals, then of course you want to meal plan for those more elaborate meals on the days that you have a little bit more time. So when you're meal planning, grab those planners out at the same time and just make sure that the meals that you are planning for certain nights actually work work on those nights and that you're not setting yourself up for, um, you know, an unrealistic expectation of the amount of time that you have. Uh, number two is, of course, to plan for treats. If there's anyone like me, then uh, you will know that uh, you like to have treats during the week. So some nights of the week, you just feel like something a little bit extra, whether that's dessert, something sweet, you might be a savory person. If you know that during the week, you're ducking out all the time to pick up those treats, I would highly recommend that you plan them into your week ahead. <laughs> What's going on over here? We're cutting lemons all on. So for me, if I know that we used to, a little while ago, I used to love the one slices of cheesecake from the cheesecake shop. Uh, if I knew that we like to duck out and do those things, I try to find cheaper options to, babe, that's the dishwasher, to um, buy when we went grocery shopping so that I could reduce the, the amount of money we were spending eating out during the week. So know your weaknesses. I think that's really important. If you know that during the week you duck out for something in particular, plan it into your groceries, see if you can find a cheaper option. And uh, often by thinking ahead of time, you just reduce those trips out because every time you go out, you're more, more than likely going to buy more than the one thing you are heading out for. So plan your treats, know your weaknesses. It's okay if you enjoy having one or two things a week, but try and get them with your groceries instead of getting them separately. That leads us into number three, which is to shop once, have a plan aim to shop just the one time. And of course, I know there are people that like to get fresh bread, milk or fruit and vegetables. That's okay. That still works with this. Set this set that money aside. Uh, but for me, when I used to shop, I used to go and get our ingredients for every night on different days. We spend so much more money because every time I went to the shop, I would see something else that was on special or I would walk past something that I didn't go in for, but all of a sudden appealed to me and I bought more and more things because I was going into the shop so often. So shopping once just means that you give yourself one opportunity to get everything you need for the week ahead. Of course, setting money aside if you're wanting to get fresh milk 
bread, et cetera, later on. But avoiding going to the shop often will save you money because like I say, it's very rare that people go into the shop during the week and only come out with that one thing or the two things that they needed. So shopping once will certainly save you some money if you are in the habit of going into the shops four, five or six times a week. Uh, and always remember that even specials are costing you money if you haven't budgeted for them. So I hear a lot of people saying how they save so much money because they saw this special. Of course, if you see a really good special, you can meal plan it into the next few weeks. Uh, but I also see people fall into the trap of buying all the specials and not actually using all that food. So the food goes to waste. And then even though it was such a good price, they've actually used money on food that they haven't ended up using in the long term. Number four, be aware of your budget as you're shopping. Uh, the math teacher in me loves this one, but try and do a running tally as you're going through the grocery store, just round up. Um, if it's over 50 cents, round down. If it's under 50 cents to give you a bit of an idea of what your groceries are gonna cost you. I think there's nothing worse than getting to the checkout and having no idea that you've overspent by that much. So when I'm going through, I will certainly just keep a check, a tally on what I've purchased. If I put something in the trolley that's $2.70, I'll count it as $3 in my head. And I just roughly go through as I'm shopping. It's such a habit now that when I get to the amount that we've budgeted, I know that I really have to rein things in and I either need to put some things back to get the last things on my list or of course, I need to stop where I am and uh, really think about how we're going to achieve our budget for that week. So keeping a running tally will just save you from getting to the check out and then realizing you've overspent at that point. I know some people take calculators with them. I think it's a really positive thing if you have your kids with you to get them to help with the adding up, the rounding and keeping a tally. It's a really good uh, skill for them to learn. And uh, if you are using online shopping, so online grocery shopping, then that tally is kept for you as you're doing your groceries online. So that is a positive in um, with online grocery shopping. Number five, make a little bit extra for dinner. We say to people, if you double the meal size, it doesn't double the price. So that's a really good strategy. If you have a few busy nights, you're also on a budget. Um, you can give yourself a night off dinner by making two lots the one night and setting the one aside in the freezer. Uh, not only, of course, does it save you money, but it's also a great opportunity to take lunch the next day. Um, so take the leftovers with you, or of course, like I said, to have two dinners in the freezer. So making a little extra dinner, a little extra of any meal is going to save you money compared to if you made two completely separate meals where you needed uh, completely different ingredients. If you try and do two meals that have similar ingredients, you can normally then buy the mince or the meat or the vegetables in bulk and uh, save yourself a little bit of money there. Number six, avoid multi-packs. So I always say to people, you are paying for the convenience. If you are, for example, buying tiny teddies for the kids' lunch boxes, I would recommend that you don't buy the pre-packaged tiny teddies, the small packets, even though they're convenient, buy the box and package them yourself. Because every time there's extra packaging um, or things are divided for you, the cost price per 100 grams seems to go up. You can look at the tags now and see what where the best value is. But I've certainly noticed when I've taken note of the tags and how much you're paying per 100 grams, that uh, buying pre-packaged food, so those multi-packs for school lunch boxes, costs you more than if you bought the bulk lot and then portion them out yourself so try buying the bulk version see if it works for you pack them into smaller portions and uh, now that we've done it for a while it really doesn't take too much time number seven buying fruit and vegetables in season so you can have a price that you work towards i know for a lot of people they try and keep their price per kilogram so the fruit price per kilogram under five dollars and uh, that just means that it keeps them in check because there are expensive fruits from time to time if they're out of season if you aim to purchase fruit and veggies that are in season you're obviously going to have nicer fruit normally it tastes better but also more cost effective um, pricing. So uh, when we are looking at buying fruit and veggies every week, you can see what's in season because you can tell by the price. You know when things are in season, when they're going out of season, because you watch how the price changes. Of course, natural disasters and things like that will impact it as well. But watch out for specials, go to markets, um, buying those odd fruits or seconds fruit. Uh, often it's just the look of the fruit in the supermarket. They have rules around what the fruit has to look like. And uh, some of the boys' favorite 
grapefruit fruit are from the odd bunch at Woolworths. They have these really tiny apples that don't meet the criteria of their normal apples. So they get packaged into um, a bag at a cheaper rate. And uh, they're tiny little apples, perfect for lunch boxes. I get so excited when I see them there because they're not always in there, uh, but certainly have a look at different options. It's going to help with the um, your cost of groceries. If you can find markets that have good prices, buy direct from farmers, all of those things are going to save you money. Uh, be resourceful. So when you're meal planning, think carefully about the meals that you're making and what you can use if you know there's going to be leftovers. So as an example, if you're going to make a roast the next day, you might use that roast meat uh, as a pizza topping or in a wrap. Um, and so that means that you don't need to buy separate ingredients for lunch the next day you can really utilize your leftovers so try and be resourceful have a look at how your meals flow during the week and uh, when you need left or when you have leftovers you probably want those meals to be planned um, from monday to friday if that's when you work because that's generally where you want to take leftovers to lunch so have a look at that, be resourceful, see if you can use some of the ingredients you made for dinner, uh, for lunch the next day. And again, it's just about saving a little bit of money and trying to make it easier for you. Another one about knowing your weaknesses. So for me, if I am hungry and I go grocery shopping, I seem to buy so much more. So if I'm going to go grocery shopping, I need to make sure that I have a full tummy, that I've had a meal before I go, because if I go when I'm hungry, everything appeals to me. I fill that trolley up really quickly. And uh, if you know that when you're out at the shops, you see lots of blocks of chocolates or different things that you want to buy, instead of uh, being unrealistic and maybe saying you're going to get absolutely nothing extra, what you can do is say, I'm going to treat myself with one thing that I see while I'm grocery shopping, that will be my treat. And so even though you're getting yourself that treat, it means that you're saving yourself from the five or six treats that you might potentially have bought before. If you have a tight budget, you're trying to save money. It's those little tricks that can sometimes help. Uh, so when you're in, it seems to be the chocolate aisle and you spot all the things that you like, instead of buying a number of things, give yourself um, the chance to get one or your favorite thing so that you do have a treat, but then let yourself know that was your goal, just one extra thing, and that'll be it for that week until the following week. And uh, I think it's important to uh, make note that you are working towards a reasonable budget. I put in brackets reasonable because I see so many families that have set a budget because they've seen someone else with a similar family size have a particular budget. And so they think that is the right budget for that size family. And every week is tricky and they struggle or they don't get to get enough food or they overspend every week and they think they've done something wrong. I think it's important to look at your grocery budget every week, see what you spend, see if you can reduce it by a little bit. I always say try for $15 a week less until it becomes comfortable and you're happy with where you got to, but certainly revisit it, make sure it's working for you. Sometimes as your kids get older, it needs to increase a little bit. Sometimes you get to decrease it a little bit. It just really depends on what stage of life you're in and uh, what's working for your family. So keep coming back to it, make sure that amount is still working for you. In some cases, you'll be able to reduce it because you've put really good habits into place like I say in other in other situations you'll have to increase it because your kids are getting older perhaps they are eating more and uh, you've got to add to your budget that little bit but keep visiting it make sure that it's working for you and make sure that it's reasonable for your family and uh, like I said right at the start don't compare your grocery budget with others uh, like I said use it as inspiration there are certainly lots of accounts full of inspiration how to reduce money on your groceries but just make sure that whatever Ever the amount is, is going to work for you and your family. Okay. I got this from a website. It's an American website. That's why they have bell peppers and things like that and uh, a pound of salmon. But uh, along the side there, you can see the website address. It is coupons.com. And uh, a person on there, I was going to say a lady on there, but a person on there found a way that they could get 20 ingredients and make seven days of breakfast, lunch, dinners. And in some cases, um, well, in all cases, they had sides with their dinner. So obviously this didn't happen overnight. They probably worked on it for a while and tried to work out how they could be the most resourceful with their budget. And uh, they bought pretty standard things there, but things that they could use over and over again for different meals. And uh, obviously, if you get really resourceful and you get it down to something like that, you have created 
a meal plan and a shopping list that works when your budget gets really tight. So this will obviously be saved if you want to come back and have a look at it. It's not mine. It's from coupons.com, which I've got the address on the side. But I think it's just a really great way to show people that when your budget is tight, um, perhaps you have a particularly difficult week, you can be really resourceful. Think outside the box and try and find options. That will mean that you're still having great meals. You have your breakfast, lunch and dinner planned and your dinner sides and uh, you haven't had to overspend so I think the lady that created this is so clever and uh, the ingredients there are just used really well across the meal so every day she seems to be having something different it doesn't feel like she's having the same thing every day but I know that if you shop that ingredient list, those 20 ingredients, well, you went to farmer's markets or to your local butcher to get most of the ingredients, I think you could get that grocery shop down to a pretty good price. All right, I put a call out on my Organising the Four of Us page a little while ago and asked if anyone had meals that they make for $5 or under. And I had an overwhelming response of people that sent them in. Such fabulous ideas. What I've done is included seven of them for this PowerPoint. Those two pages that you can see on the screen in front of you are the seven recipes that I included, which are part of the printout that you'll be able to download for free. And uh, I think they're just amazing. The cheese pancakes, the tin spaghetti pies. I think the tin spaghetti pies, the lady had written it cost her $4 something, can't remember. Um, but a few of them noted that they waited until things like chicken, their chicken was on special or certain great ingredients were on special. But they all said that in every case, they could achieve these recipes for under $5 as long as they were clever with what they bought and uh, they tried to buy the ingredients on special. So there was a leftover chicken and sweet corn noodles, the tin spaghetti pies, which is of course made with that Kmart pie maker. I think it is sold out in most places. It was such a popular um, item and I looked in our Kmart this week. I, I couldn't see it, but that tin spaghetti pie recipe was using Kmart's pie maker. If you have a different pie maker, you'd be able to use that as well. There's a tuna bake a nachos, which is a vegetarian version. You could, of course, change up the um, beans that they crushed up and use mince instead. Mini pizzas using halved English muffins with sauce, uh, the French onion soup, and then the cheese pancakes in our family. If we have a really late night or we're keeping our budget down for whatever reason, uh, the boys' favorite meal for under $5 is what we call toast pizzas. We get a slice of bread, put tomato sauce on it and cheese and grill it. Uh, and it is one of their favorite meals. I wish we had it more often because I love it. Uh, but there's definitely meals out there that you can come, that you do come across. If you search online on Pinterest, on Google, you'll find so many meals that you can make for $5. And it's worth just keeping an eye out for them and putting them aside so that if you do have a week where your budget is particularly tight, you've already done the hard work and you can go to some of those meals, the $5 meals or less. And uh, another way to obviously reduce your budget is to pick one or two of them a week amongst your normal meals and try and reduce your budget that way. But they're just seven examples. There were so many out there. Okay, breakfast ideas. I think whenever you are meal planning, it's a really good idea to have breakfast, lunch and dinner ideas written down somewhere because sometimes people get overwhelmed by meal planning because they sit down with a blank page and they don't even know where to begin. So I have a, a list of breakfast ideas written down, lunch ideas and dinner ideas that I will share with you tonight. But I think it's important that you write your own breakfast, lunch and dinner ideas because if whatever I've written down isn't something that your family would enjoy, then obviously you're not going to create a successful meal plan for your family. So at the moment, we pick between two favorites for weekdays, things like Vitabrits, which are similar to Wheat Bix, except they have no added sugar and toast and they, the boys, we're very blessed with the boys. They just like simple food. But at the moment, that's what we swap between. So for example, on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they might have Vitabrits. And then on a Tuesday and Thursday, they might have toast. Saturday and Sunday, we would do something different. Uh, we used to do a meal plan when the boys were a bit younger. I think they were in daycare where we would have a different breakfast for every day of the week. So you can see that in front of you there, things like porridge or there's a lot of coconut based breakfast there because we were dairy free at that stage for my eldest son. But uh, just make sure that whatever you write down in your list 
uh, breakfast that you can achieve with the amount of time you have in the morning. You do not want to be making big lots of pancakes or bacon and eggs or anything like that if it's on a school morning where you know you'll be rushed. So think about some easy ideas and then some ideas for your slower mornings or weekends. Uh, the boys always love uh, Tim making breakfast, so bacon, eggs, that sort of breakfast, which we leave for a Saturday or Sunday. So bacon and eggs or pancakes is always a weekend breakfast. We keep our breakfast really simple. The boys are quite happy for us to alternate between two options during the week. But at the end of the day, you just have to sit down and think about what breakfasts work in your house. Maybe you can try and introduce something new if you're looking for some new ideas. But sit down with your kids or with your partner and ask them what sorts of breakfasts they enjoy. You might be surprised by what they enjoy because if I ask my kids, they're so simple. And they're the things like vitabrits and toast. So have a list there. Uh, for lunches, we have a very easy setup for the boys, school lunch lunch boxes so we always make a sandwich they pick two fruit two vegetables two grains and a treat and uh, that's made it easy we've done that since our eldest was in prep so that is we're going into our fourth year now of making lunch boxes and that system still works very well for us I know in some houses lunch boxes have to be different all the time because if you have a kid that gets bored with the same food then obviously having similar foods all the time won't work for you but for us if we try and change it up the boys request back to this type of lunch box so we have the lunch box sort of set up where they choose any two fruit and any two vegetables for the boys it's normally strawberries and apples for the fruit and then carrot sticks and cucumber for the vegetables the fruit will change from time to time normally always apple but the other fruit will change but the vegetables I think the carrot sticks and the cucumber they've probably had for the four years that is always the vegetable or the vegetables that they choose for adult lunches that can be a little bit difficult which is why leftovers work really well in most cases but just some ideas are things you can make ahead of time or that are easy to make if you're heading out to work and need a lunch are things like pasta salad wraps cruskets with cheese and tomato I love that put a bit of salt and um, pepper on it one of the most simple lunches and yet it's one of my favorites pizza muffins which we talked about in the five dollar meal challenge uh, BLT sandwiches, quiche, soup, and sushi. So things like quiche, soup, and the pasta salad, you can make ahead of time, prep them on a Sunday, and then maybe prep again on the Wednesday so you're not having to make lunch all the time. But again, create a list of lunches that will work in your house. And if you buy your lunch out when you go to work, if you're buying your lunch out four out of five days, then I'd recommend that you just aim to maybe make your own lunch two times a week and then the next week try three times a week and just slowly build up. But think about the sorts of meals that you would enjoy to have at work, meals that you're actually going to eat because I think sometimes we have good intentions, we take it to work, then we get to work, feel like something different. That's when we're more likely to go and buy some lunch out. So have a think about some of the lunches that would work in your home. Okay, dinner ideas. I'm not going to go into this list too much now because I will talk about it a bit later. But again, I just think it's really good to have a list of dinners that you know your family likes. And uh, you can start your list by just sitting down with your family and asking them what their favourite meals are. Uh, begin there. If everyone in our house has two favourite meals, then I've already got a list of eight things. And that printable that is free that I will share, I'll share a link to, um, that has that list where you can come up with 30 dinners and we'll talk about why down the track if you've done project 14 before then you'll know all about my list of 30 meals but having a breakfast lunch and dinner list I think is so valuable when you sit down to do your meal planning every week because it just helps you to think about uh, the sorts of meals that your family likes it means that you're not spending as much time doing it and you can get it done as quick as possible all right other ideas for meals I say to people all the time for some reason, people think slow cookers are only really for winter meals, things like stews and curries. They are absolutely not. You can use them for such amazing meals. And I know when I got a slow cooker, Tim wasn't particularly keen because he thought about the things like stews and curries or anything with meat. He would rather cook himself on a barbecue because he's particular about the way that he likes his meat to be cooked. And so I really had to look for different meals that would work in our house. And I've got some of them on the screen there with where the recipe came came from so quite a few of them are from slow cooker central if you're looking for slow cooker meals I would recommend that you look at slow cooker central so just type that into google the other one being all recipes that's a really good one as well look for 
slow cooker meals in particular, but you can cook a whole chicken with veggies. You can do ribs, baked potatoes. Baked potato is one of my favorite. You literally get the potato, put elf oil around it, put it into the slow cooker, turn it on. When you get home from work, the baked potatoes are ready to add your sour cream and bacon or whatever. Um, coleslaw whatever you're wanting to put in the baked potatoes if you have a busy night baked potatoes are such a good thing to have ready to go because they're filling most mostly people in the family enjoy baked potatoes and because you can choose the filling that you know everyone will enjoy it's normally a successful meal in a house with young kids so that's a really good one the finger licking chicken that's on the screen from Slow Cooker Central is amazing. I would write that one down. Uh, there's a, a roast pork. And then another one of my favorites you can do in a slow cooker is spaghetti bolognese. And you can actually put the mince and the spaghetti in the slow cooker. So it's all ready when you get home. But have a look for those recipes online. Uh, like I said, just Google slow cooker recipes or go directly to some of those sites that I've listed. But having slow cooker meals is a great idea because mostly people have more energy just before they head to work. Then they get home from work and they're tired. It's nothing quite like walking in and smelling dinner all ready to go. And uh, those dinners that I have on the screen are particularly yummy. They're, they're meals that our family approves of and I uh, would certainly give them a go. So if you're time poor, that's another idea. Even if you're not working, but as you go to do um, school pickup, you know that after that you're going to sport. So it's going to be five or six hours before you get home. That's a perfect opportunity to put the meal into the slow cooker before you head out. And uh, then it'll be ready when you get back from after school sports. Other ideas to make dinner easier, things like sheet pan dinners. If you haven't heard about them, they're where you make the entire dinner on a baking tray. So you put everything onto the tray. Normally it's the meat and the veggies and put it in the oven. When you take it out, it's ready to go. One pot dinners is a very popular one and that's a good one for washing up. You've got a big night, you don't want to make too many um, dirty dishes to clean up. One pot, one pot dinners are amazing. Uh, all in a bag freezer prep meals where on a Sunday you put the meat and marinade all together or the veggies into a bag. They go into the freezer uh, the night before you're making the meal, you lift it out and then it's ready to go. It's all in the bag. Everything's chopped up. That's a really good one if you would like to start meal prepping. And then, of course, bulk cookups. And I have a YouTube video on this, but I have Create Bake Makes Family Dinners Made Easy cookbook. She's got the traditional one and the Thermomix version. And uh, the picture there uh, is from the day that I made 16 dinners in six hours. The meals are incredible, so delicious, so easy. The boys love them. We've made them over and over again. I think it's just really important to find something that will work for you, whether it be using a slow cooker more, whether it be doing a bulk cook up or doing a little more meal prep on a Sunday, find what's going to work best for you. We're going to have to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a very long time. There's very few people that don't have to make their own food. And so I think investing the time into looking into ways to make uh, meal time a little easier is going to pay off in the long term. Sometimes it takes us that day or half an hour, whatever we're putting aside to get the systems into place sorted. But once they're into place, we're going to, you know, be using these sorts of ideas for years and years and years. And we're going to be glad we invested the time. So if you aren't a fan of meal time, meal time doesn't work for you or meal planning isn't working for you, take the time to, uh, to stop and think about why it's not working. And then think about the small things or the changes that you can make to make it that little bit more bearable because it's worthwhile. You don't want to hate it for the rest of your life because there's many, many years more of cooking to do. Okay, uh, obviously when in the workshop, we spend some time thinking about breakfast, lunch and dinner ideas. I think people surprise themselves with how many ideas they could come up with. So I would highly recommend, we obviously won't do it now because it will just be a long silence <laughs> on my end. Um, but I would recommend that you spend some time coming up with some breakfast, lunch and dinner ideas that you know work in your home. That's going to be a really worthwhile resource when you sit down to do your meal planning every week because you will have some ideas uh, of meals you can put straight into your meal plan because you know they work for your family. Okay, different types of meal planning. Here we go. There is a standard type of meal planning, which is the type of meal planning that everyone is, you know, that's most common. And uh, that is the one where you, you typically do it the day before you go grocery shopping. 
you sit down and you work out what you're going to have for the week ahead. Uh, you plan out whether it's a week ahead or a fortnight ahead or a month ahead. Uh, some people will plan breakfast, lunch and dinner. Other people will plan for dinners only. That is the standard type of meal planning. Now, of course, what we need to be careful with is that type of meal planning is that we don't overbuy. So with standard meal planning, that is what we, I don't want to say normal meal planning, but what you see most days or when people share their meal plan, what you've got to be careful with is if you're not looking ahead at what's happening that week, or you don't have your planner out, or you've forgotten that you're out for a night dinner, or you're at a sporting event, you probably pick up dinner after that, you end up buying meals for every day, and then you don't use one or two of them because you were out and you'd forgotten. So it's very important when you're meal planning to sit down and look at not only what meals you want to have for the week ahead, but what's actually happening in the week ahead, and then plan around that. So when I'm meal planning, I always start with what the week ahead looks like. I get an idea of how busy it is. I get an idea of how many nights we're out. And then I look at the types of meals I'll make for that week. And it changes from week to week often because of what we have on as a family. Um, and like I said earlier, just make sure that on busy nights, you're planning easy meals. And then if you like to cook, you're going to plan those meals that you love spending time in the kitchen making on the days that you have more time. And whilst that sounds really straightforward and it sounds like it's common sense, often when you are meal planning, you're a little bit disconnected to how you're actually going to be feeling in the week on those busy days. And until you get used to getting your plan around and seeing what your week's like, that is where meal planning often comes undone. Or people say they tried, but it just didn't work. That a lot of the time, that is why. And it's really about looking at what's going to work for your family. Don't look at other people's meal plans. Look at what's going to work for you. Okay, and then there is reverse meal planning. That is where you shop first and then you plan when you get home. Now, that works well for people that like to go into the grocery store and see what's been marked down. So if you're going into the grocery store and seeing if any meat's been marked down or any bakery items have been marked down, that sort of thing, reverse meal planning works well for you because you can go into the store make sure you're getting the bargains that you're looking for and then you come home and meal plan. Now, of course, to make sure that that works, you need to keep an eye on how much you're buying to make sure that you're not underbuying for the week ahead or overbuying unless you're happy to put things away in the freezer. So that is the type of meal planning that people often overshop or undershop. And once you've done it for a while, you get it gets a little bit easier. I think reverse meal planning is actually a great way to do it, particularly if you're trying to stick to a budget. And um, because I do think it works well for a lot of people, but it's not spoken about a lot, what I did was I actually did some reverse meal planning to show you. So I just got a piece of ice. What you can see in front of you is a lot. I um, went on to Woolworths Online grocery shopping and I had a look at what they had on special and I tried to create a meal plan for breakfast, lunch, dinner and a couple of snacks from the specials that they had that week and that's what I had. So you can see what I bought there. I think there was some chicken thigh on special. I do know there was tortellini off the top of my head on special. There were quite a few different types of fruit on special and uh, things like the delights, those sorts of things. So what I did was I went around and I tried to get enough to make a meal plan. Now, here's what it looked like. I put it together for you. So those different things that you just saw on the screen before, they came to $92.59, uh, making sure that I was shopping for what was on special. Of course, if I went into, into the store, I could probably make it a little bit cheaper. But that's what I came up with. So we were alternating between crumpets with honey or Vegemite. I will note we have honey and Vegemite. So I didn't add those to the shopping list. But everything else is in the shopping list, including the Vitabrits. I added them into the trolley as well. We we're going between crumpets and then Vitabrits, having pancakes on Sunday. During the week, the boys' lunchboxes are there. So there was a sandwich, two fruit, two veggies, the treat and the crackers. For the fruit, they could choose out of apples, oranges, banana or pear. And for the veggies, of course, carrot sticks or cucumber. Um, I had really basic lunches on Saturday and Sunday because of course I was trying to do it on a budget so we got the tip top sandwich thins with tomato and cucumber and then on the Sunday tuna on toast but the dinners I think are really good dinners so I tried to make them different and uh, other than the Tuesday which was going to be a busy night so we had baked beans on toast other than that they were really good meals so things like spaghetti meatballs and vegetables there was a savory mince and veggies chicken roast veggies and steamed fresh fish and chips 
because we were going to do a takeaway style dinner on the Friday, making our own, and then tortellini and roast veggies. And for after school snacks, because I was looking at some cost effective snacks, I came up with popcorn that we would pop ourselves because that obviously saves money compared to if you buy it pre-packaged, um, corn thins with Vegemite and then pears. Now, yes, I could have done that shopping a lot cheaper, but what I tried to do using Woolworths online groceries was I tried to only put things in my cart that I would be happy for our family to eat. So I could have, yes, made it a lot cheaper. You can even see there's not sausages in there. So I really didn't do everything I could to make it as cheap as I possibly could. But I think it's just a good example to show how you can do a week's meal plan uh, and that's everything bar the honey and veggie mine you can do it for a fairly affordable price not missing any meals not eating out at all if you have to stick to a budget it is possible and of course you could tweak that I after I'd done that on Woolworths groceries I saved it to my master list so that in the future I can go in and add those things. Of course, it won't be $92.59 because a lot of those things are on special. So it could be a little bit more, but I've saved it as a list for the weeks that we want to bring our budget down a little bit more, or we're wanting to go away the following week and we're looking to save some money. These are the sorts of things you can do. So having those lists ready to go for those weeks obviously pays off in the long term. And I just wanted to show how reverse meal planning works. So I really sat down, you right, Hans? I really sat down first and looked at what was on special. And then I created my meal plan, which is what reverse meal planning is all about. If you struggle with meal planning, you can try themed dinners. So create something that works for you. This is just an example. You might do something like meatless Mondays, taco Tuesday, slow cook Wednesday, date night Thursday. That's obviously for us. Bake away Friday, which is the same as takeaway Friday, but you make it yourself. Barbecue Saturday and roast Sunday. Now, what that does is it stops the overwhelming feeling of sitting in front of a blank page for meal planning and having no idea what to plan. And for some people, they say to me, meal planning takes them hours because it just takes them so long to think about what to make. So these strategies are about trying to make it a little bit easier. If you use themed dinners, what it does is it narrows down the options, which makes it a lot quicker to decide what you're going to have. So for example, on a Taco Tuesday, you might do something else Mexican style, so enchiladas, those sorts of things. Or on Slow Cooker Wednesday, you might get out your Slow Cooker meal list, choose some of those things, nice and easy. Fake Away Friday is about creating takeaway style meals, but you make them at home. So maybe homemade pizza. Uh, if you like to have Indian out, you might make your own Indian at home. Um, burgers, like we had the fish and chips in the reverse meal planning. But giving yourself a little bit of a structure helps you when you sit in front of that blank page. It makes it a lot quicker uh, to come up with meals. So that's another idea for people who struggle to come up with those sorts of things. Another idea of meal planning really just isn't working for you. You've tried everything. What I would recommend you do is you record the good days. So have a blank meal planning um, template. Now mine is, I'll just grab one. Okay, I'm back. All right, so obviously they're in the planner, but if you don't have a planner, what we have is these notepads. You could write one up yourself and it has breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. And it's just a blank page. There's lots of blank pages. Now, what you can do is have this out. And whenever you have a meal that really works, the family enjoys it, you made it at home, it was in your budget, just everything aligned, you write down what the meal was. And then you give yourself time. Over time, you're going to fill one of these out. Uh, not putting any time restraints on, just whenever you have a good dinner that works or a good Good lunch that you've made you pop it in here and then once you have a full week you remove the page and then start a new week and once you have three or four meal plans written up you can just rotate between them you do not need to come up with a brand new meal plan every single week if it doesn't work for you so once you've got meal plans that you know work really well you can rotate them number them one to four and just keep going through them I did that for a long time when we were busy and what I also did was because I was using online shopping at the time I actually went on and created my shopping list and then saved it. And so when I was doing week one's meal plan, which had been written out, obviously, I would go onto my Woolworths account and I would go to week one, which is a saved shopping list. I would press add everything to cart. If I needed to add anything extra that week, I would add it in, but the shopping list was done already and so was my meal plan. So meal planning is really about taking the time to get on top of the system 
at the start and it will just keep paying back over and over again because even now if we have a week where on a Sunday the day just flies past and at the end of the day I haven't had time to sit down a meal plan I will still go on to Woolworths get one of those saved lists and just add everything because I know everything I need for lunchbox is in there there's uh, five to seven dinners in there depending on which week meal plan it was uh, there's milk and bread everything I need I can just add everything to the cart and it will arrive so it is a bit of peace of mind for me it's really good if we're coming back from a holiday and uh, on the way back I just add it in and schedule it into arrive you don't have to make it a stressful thing find a system that works for you if it's about recording only the good days do that give yourself time you'll create a meal plan and you can come back over and over again Okay, I said I wasn't going to talk about the dinner, the 30 meal ideas in depth because I'd be coming back to it. This is it here. Uh, back when I was a Thermomix consultant, I was out a lot of nights and because I was making so many meals for other people in their homes while I was showing them the Thermomix, I um, often didn't want to be spending a lot of time thinking about what I wanted to make at home because I just spent time making meals for other people. So what I did was I created this thing called when dinner goes into lockdown, I made 30 meals, although 31 would make more sense for some months. And then they were all Thermomix meals because that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to use my Thermomix more. The reason those um, recipes have different colors in them is because I um, created links. I could just press on it and it would go to the recipe. But what I did was I found 30 Thermomix dinners that our family loved, numbered them one to 30. And then when I sat down to meal plan on a Sunday night, if the week started on the 5th, let's say it was March, 5th of March, I would then meal plan for the 5th of March, the 5th of March, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th using numbers 5 to 11. If it happened to be the 1st of January, I would go, obviously, meal one was for the 1st of January. Meal two was for the 2nd of January. If I was doing August 28th, Number 28 would be the dinner. And it meant that even if we only used those 30 dinners that I knew we loved, that were easy to do in the Thermomix, even if we only used that list of 30 and we rotated it all through the entire year, we wouldn't eat the same meal twice in a month. So there's 30 different meals and we would only eat every meal 12 times. That's it. So that, that list of dinners was just a godsend for me. And uh, because I would often put the Thermomix on and then put the boys in the bath and then come back when it beeped and everything was ready, it was just everything. It saved me so much time. We used that for months and it's on, I have an old blog page where I used to blog um, and write articles on. I have that from, I think it was 2013, otherwise 2014. And that list of 30 meals I still share to this day we still love all those meals and it's still a backup plan for me so if that sounds like a good idea for you you can use that I'll share the free downloadable link to print out the worksheets that I created just use that 30 meal template and write down 30 meals you don't have to come up with them all at once just begin writing them and as you think about other meals add them in, ask your family for their favorite meals. You don't have to do it alone and uh, get a list of meals. It will help you. And if that sounds like a good idea, number them one to 30, you can use them month after month after month. Okay, we did another activity, obviously thinking about how many dinner ideas we could think of in five to 10 minutes. Some people had very long lists and in a short amount of time they had surprised themselves with how many ideas they could come up with now spending the time doing that is going to save you time when you go to meal plan so i'm saying this over and over again but what you what you want to do is if meal planning is not working for you you want to sit down and find out which option will work for you or which option could you tweak to work for you and get those lists written out get those shopping lists written out invest the time now so that you can make every single week that you need to meal plan that a little bit easier Okay, and then I always say to people, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal. I think that's really important. If you know mealtime isn't working in your house and your goal is to make mealtime a better experience, a more positive experience, um, something that you don't dread, then stick to that goal. Don't give up on it. Change the plan. Try something else if whatever you're doing isn't working, but don't lose sight of your goal, which is to make, you know, let yourself enjoy dinner time as well. There's a lot of people that hate dinner time because of the prep involved and the fact that they go to the fridge and they haven't meal plans so they have no idea what they're making that night and their kids have had enough. Uh, you know, it's five o'clock in the afternoon, everyone's tired. 
try and hold on to your goal, which for most people is just to have peaceful meal times. And certainly uh, there's going to be good days and bad days. There aren't really any, I don't think there's any systems which will mean that for the rest of your life, meal plan is going to go smoothly. You're going to have ups and downs, but certainly if it's a stressful time in your life, try and think about something small you can do to make it that's a little bit better. And every time you think of something small and you implement that and then you think of something else and you just keep working towards your goal, those things are snowballing. And when you look back to where you started, you'll realize how each of those small things built on each other and created a much better experience for you at mealtime. So I've gone through so many different ideas. Obviously, when you're meal planning, you can't use them all. You need to think about what's going to work best for you. But I just hope that something that I've shared tonight has given you an idea or maybe you've thought about something completely different while you've been watching the video that you think might work for you but I do think anything to do with budgeting or meal planning uh, or housework is worth it because every day it's happening it's not going to go away we might as well stop thinking about what it is that we don't like about it and see if we can put small things into place to make it that little bit more bearable so i hope it was useful if you don't want to stay around for any questions by all means um you are more than welcome to clock out of the live video now i'm just going to check if there's any questions i'm not sure if there is thank you for joining me on a friday night i know it's a precious time in the week and i hope that something tonight has helped you all right let's have a look people that are staying behind if you have any questions i always have a very quick look okay just in case there's anything specific all right Okay, Melissa says, I'm a little confused why doubling the meal doesn't double the price. All right, so if you are making, let's say, for example, you are making mince and vegetables, that type of meal, um, and you're going to buy a smaller lot of mince, you'll often find that buying a bigger size of mince, so going from 500 grams to a kilo or maybe a kilo to two kilos, you're going to get a better deal. So you'll often see those sort of bulk prices out there. And with vegetables, let's say, for example, you only needed half of something so you were going to use half of a zucchini or half of some type of vegetable of course then you're going to have to buy the whole thing anyway so in a lot of cases the meals that you make uh, buying a bigger amount will either mean that you go into the next bracket price wise so bulk prices or if you're using vegetables you have less wastage so if i see a meal that has an odd amount of veggies use a lot of halves then i will double the meal so that I'm, I'm already buying those vegetables. I need one so I can get half. So I'll double the recipe so I'm not wasting that other bit in that meal, if that makes sense. All right. Okay. Um, Carla said, I think she was replying to Melissa, on the doubling thing, a little more veg or tad more mince past the rice can make a huge difference for, for a few cents. It's very true. And it's something that when we were watching what we were buying, we noticed that things like, um, I think lasagna was one of them. You could make two lasagnas and not pay um, a great deal more than if you were making one lasagna because there were always lasagna sheets left over. Uh, from making one so we started to make double the amount and then we didn't have the wastage we'd already bought the box of lasagna sheets so it wasn't costing us extra to make that second one uh, but we were able to get a second meal out of it okay I love the don't compare with others for your budget yes I see people comparing a lot and like I say uh, I think that it's really good when people share their their grocery budget because it gives people inspiration and then if it's lower than someone else's, people are able to say, how do you get yours so low? And people share what works for them. And I think that's a, a really good thing, a positive thing that we can learn from others, how to reduce our budget. But at the same time, I think it's important not to compare because everyone's circumstances are so different. They might still have the same size family as you, but they might not have the same living conditions. So as an example, uh, you might be comparing a stay at home mum with a working mum. You could be comparing a mum that has after, after school sports the entire week versus a mum whose kids aren't in after school sports. So might have a little bit more more time in the afternoon there's so many things uh, partners that work away versus partners that are at home to help at meal times single mums those sorts of things it's very hard to compare a budget because there's very different living situations out there so I think by all means use the inspiration find out ideas find out what works best for others and how they reduce their groceries but then see how or see whether it will work for you okay I do risotto and lasagna in the slow cooker. We'll definitely check out Slow Cooker Central. Yes, and there's some slow cooker Facebook pages as well. Huge group pages where people share their favorite 
slow cooker meals. I think they're a really positive thing to follow if you're wanting to use your slow cooker a little bit more. Okay, will I post this on my YouTube channel? Yes, absolutely. So when I jump off the live video, I will um, obviously save it to the page. You can watch it back, but I will also pop it onto YouTube because once a week or so goes past, sometimes it can be tricky to find things on a Facebook page. So I'll put it onto um, YouTube as well, onto that channel so that you can just Google it and find it nice and easily. Uh, thank you for joining me. My comments are only showing the most relevant comments. So I only have a selection of the questions, which means that I can't see them all, which is okay. When I jump off the live video, I'll get to those last ones ones but hopefully it's given you some ideas and if nothing else it started a conversation um, either in your house or online where you can talk about what's working for you what's not working for you and get some ideas from other people as well so that is number four out of the four part series like I say if you haven't watched the other three they are not organizing the four of us and they will be on YouTube as well we spoke about things like um, budgeting in one we did the list of three splitting your day into three all sorts of different ideas with uh, dishes and laundry as well, which is two major things in anyone's house. So hopefully the videos have been helpful. This is the fourth and final one of these types of videos. But if, if you have requests for anything else, leave them in the comments and I can certainly do some other videos as well. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Bye.